My name is Pastor Ari, and I'm very glad to bring to you the mission or community moment, the MC moment. If you're in Worship Harvest and you're not in a mission or community, you can join one today because there is life in the mission or community. So today, we have Bethel MC from Worship Harvest downtown. <laughs> Bethel MC is led by Amanda over here. And Amanda, just tell us about your MC. What do you do for Frontier? Which neighborhood do you reach out to? Who are you as a mission or community? Thank you so much, Pastor Ari. Good morning, Worship Harvest. It's an honor to be here to represent Worship Harvest downtown. Thank you, Abmo, for the opportunity to lead a mission or community. It's really transforming lives. So here with me is Bethel MC from Worship Harvest downtown. We are located in Chitintale, and our frontier is a school in the neighborhood who, that we help with scholastic materials and, you know, praying with them, worshiping with them. Yeah. Awesome. Amanda, there are many, many stories of people's lives that have been changed in your mission or community. Can you just share with us one of them? Okay. Uh, before I hand over the mic to the person who will share the story, uh, this is Betty. She's our outreach coordinator, and yeah. And we have Barbara, who is our garage mobilizer. They will be, they will be the stories that we share of transformation in our mission or community. Hi, worship harvest Nalia. Hi. My name is Barbara, and this is my testimony. Um, I used to be in some church before I joined Worship Harvest, and um, I served there for more than 10 years. I started while well I was a little younger, and um, along the way, things didn't go well for me. I conceived, I got pregnant out of wedlock, and um, I was condemned. People pointed fingers at me, whispers were all over. Each time I entered church, all eyes were on me and fingers were being pointed at me. I felt so bad. I felt like I had become a sinner. So I stepped out of church and I decided to live my life the way I wanted. I did all sorts of things and I didn't care because I wasn't in church. So one day my boss approaches me and she tells me, she asks me if I was in any church. I told her no. I don't want to be in church. I just want to be at home. I want to pray from home. And then she told me, but you need people. You need people who are going to encourage you. You need fellowship. So she tells me, Barbara, I'm going to invite you. I'm going to ask you to go to Worship Harvest, Bugolobi, because my workplace is around Bugolobi. I work with Julie Mulira. So, yes. So she looked out for me, she counseled me, she talked to me, and she encouraged me to go to church. So I didn't want to tell her no, because she's my boss. So I was like, let me just go for just, just. And I told myself, I am going to go. That was after, of course, I'd given birth and the boy is here. <laughs> oh. yes, uh, <laughs> yes. So I, I remember telling myself, I want to see if I'm going to be condemned in this other church. So I decided to wear very damaged jeans and I wanted to see if they are going to point fingers at me. <laughs> to my surprise, it was different. <laughs> I was given a warm welcome. People gave me hugs. People wanted to be close to me. People laughed on me. I was like, oh my God, this is different. I think this is where I belong. So I went back and she asked me the next day, of course, she was like, Barbara, how was it? I told her, Auntie Julie, this was amazing. Everybody was loving on me. And she told me, you see, you've got a family. So, of course, after some time, I again left church. Because remember, it wasn't from my heart. She had told me because she was my boss. So while I was home, I, she kept calling me and asking me, Barbara, how is church? What did they preach about? And of course, I had nothing to tell her because I, I did not attend church. I was like, okay, my boss is being on me. What do I do? So each time she came to class, I would find an escape route. 
And she would come looking for Barbara. And I'm like, oh, God, okay. I need to talk to her. I need to tell her the truth. So I told her, Auntie Julie, you know what? I'm not yet into church. So she tells me, now I want to be your disciple. I want to help you. Wow. So every morning we had prayers at school. She would call me. She would talk to me. She would pray with me. And then this time she invites me to worship harvest downtown. So I, she introduces me to Bethel MC. And while I was in Bethel MC, uh, I remember that was in 2021. Uh, that was the time we were struggling as teachers. Of course, we were not working. So um, I was struggling with rent. And um, I remember the landlady coming late in the night. She came in at 9. That was a Tuesday. And she told me, because I live with my son, we're only two in the house. She says, she's like, get out. You've not completed the rent. And it was only 280000 left because I'd given her some of the money. So when she told me, get out, my son started to cry. So when he cried, of course, I also got emotional and cried. So I pleaded with the lady to pardon us for at least one more day. So, of course, the next day was MC. I was like, okay, now I'm not going to go for MC. I'm going to look for money. I'm, I'm, I won't attend. So my son tells me, he reminds me, mommy, today is MC, we go. So I'm like, Tendo, we can't go. I have to look for money. He tells me, but mommy, God is going to give you money. So I'm like, okay. So because he told me, we went for MC. And I remember Amanda asking for prayer requests, and I gave in mine. And they prayed for me, and then we left, just like that. So she gave me a lift, and of course, while I was walking with my boy to our place of residence, I had a notification on my phone, but then I ignored it. I thought it was just an MTN, you know, message on ABC. So my son tells me, Mommy, Mommy, you have a message on your phone. I told him, Tender, I'll check from home. So he tells me, Mommy, check. So I'm like, okay. I checked the phone, and guess what? They had paid the remaining rent balance. Wow. Wow. It was too much for me. I remember screaming on the road, and everybody was looking at me, and Tendo asked me, Mommy, what has happened? I told him, Tendo, something has happened, something good. Let's go and get the money. So we quickly got the money and took it and paid there and then. Then last week, um, you know I'm not so good with fasting. I'm, God is giving me the grace. <laughs> So I, I shared uh, with uh, Barry, and I told her I'm struggling with school fees. I've paid some of the money, but uh, my boy needs to join P1. It's a new school, and they need quite a lot of money. So she told me, Barbara, you know what? You're going to go into fasting. <laughs> and in my head, I'm thinking, huh? I've never fasted. So I'm like, OK. I just told her, OK. I did not tell her that other side. So I remember she told me, pray, start the next day. So I only went up to one. From morning up to one and I ate. But I prayed. And that very evening, God used somebody to send me all the money. And now my boy is enjoying his P1. Thank you. Wow, wow, guys, that hand. My goodness. Mission or community is a place where you are family, where you're taken care of, spiritual, social, economic renewal, in your personal life, in your family's life, in the neighborhood. So if you're not in a mission or community, at the back of the church, at the end of the service, just write your name, your phone number, and where you live, and we'll connect you to one. Can you give a huge hand clap to these people who are causing transformation?